to get started, let's call this meeting to order. It's the Finance Committee meeting, April 21st, and we're going to be going over the budget um, some more. And uh, so uh, one thing I wanted to mention before we start uh, talking to um, these um, department heads is I thought that maybe um, we have two more meetings tonight and tomorrow to listen to everyone. And then after that, we're going to be next Wednesday talking about you know, putting in all our recommendations. So if you don't mind, could you- It was Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Yeah, Yeah, because don't you have tri-board on Wednesday? Yes, next, oh. sorry, next Tuesday. Okay, okay. You're right, next Tuesday. Um, and so if we could, if you can email me maybe just any, you know, some thoughts so that I can put them all down in a list and then we can compile everybody's thoughts on, you know, if you want, if you think, you know, oh, well, this might be helpful, let's discuss this item, let's discuss this item, you know, maybe make an adjustment here. I would love to have gather everybody's thoughts together and then um, share it and then we can have just one big discussion. So right now we're just been listening to everybody and we're not making any recommendations at this point, but at, on Tuesday, if I could get ahead everybody's thoughts, you know, and not that you can't add thoughts on Tuesday either, but um, this way we won't miss any. <laughs> I just. And, and by then I'll have that worksheet to you, that the, the one that goes to town meeting and you'll, the finance committee will be, I'll just have it in blanks or zeros or whatever blanks. And you guys, yep. you can give me direction on, on that. Well, I'll pick up direction from your meeting and then I'll, then I'll have it filled in for the next day. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. That'd be great. That would be great. Oh, all right. So um, did you have any, Carolyn or, or Lynn, did you want to add anything before we just jump in or to these? I, no, what I would like to do is if possible, since um, there's a lot of us who are still going to be here at the end of the meeting, yeah. if we could just have it go in alphabetical order. I think you received it in alphabetical order, but he put um, finance committee, uh, the select board slash town administrator, legal town buildings and accounting at the end, if that's okay with you guys, just so oh, these guys don't have to wait for yeah. a lot. It's okay. pretty much like that, but we just had finance and committee uh, reserve up a little bit higher, but you'll be, you'll all be here at the end, so. Oh yeah, can... we'll skip it, that's fine. <laughs> and then what I will do too, is when I go over the select board account, I will um, have Jennifer talk a little bit about the CARES Act funding and let you know what some of the funding that uh, was covered by CARES Act. Oh, okay. Oh, and that reminds me, that's perfect because Linda mentioned, and I wasn't able to get on. Okay. It was too early for me today, um, but you said you just went to something this morning. Yeah. So and, I would love to have information on that. And Carolyn did and Dan Zadonik did. Okay. And, and that was all on the, um, what we talked about, possibly the $1.5 million that we'll be getting, you know, from... Yes, it was it was very broad and very general. Okay. And they're at the point of saying, well, you'll, there's more questions than answers at this point. But yes, we'd be happy to do a review of that um, at, at the close of your deal, close. when you're dealing with department heads. And, and Dan, yeah. if you want to hang around for that, that would be helpful too, or, or else we did talk so I can you know, share our thoughts. Okay. Okay, great. Am I set up for sharing, Jennifer? Yes. Thank you. All right. And I'm just grabbing a pen for my notes. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. So let's uh, start uh, with Dan since assessors are first on the list. Just give me a moment to back up. There. Now, is assessors showing? Did I get that right? Mm. Yes. Yes. All righty. All right. And, and if Dan is there, um, you could just go over your budget and then let us know of anything you want to, you know, just the floor is yours. Uh, yep. A uh, couple things on here. Uh, the board had included stipends of $1,200 a year for themselves, which was deleted in the level services and the level our level funded and administrator recommended budget. On my position, the board had put me in at 40 hours a week. 
huh. up from 35 in the initial budget for the level service budget. Uh, there have been a lot of changes in the last few years in our office. The addition of VADAR for real estate and excise billing, and also adding in point in the building inspector's office has kind of shifted workload down the chain. So there's more hours per week that we're spending on that. My office is spending on that. In addition, there's a number of other changes through the DOR. We just found out last month that I have to do a cost appraisal of Eversource and Berkshire Gas each year going forward in order to build them for personal property, which is quite an extensive task. That's something that I'm pretty sure I can do. We've, I've already purchased the, the cost manuals in order to do it. Uh, there's vendors out there. Basically, it's going to cost about 10 grand a year if we have to do it, if we have to outsource it. When does that start, Dan? Uh, that's actually fiscal 22. We need to do the, the appraisals. Okay. Dan, I'm curious, what do, you know, spending more to appraise them, um, does that come back in, to us in some way? You know, in terms of the taxes they pay, um, does that get increased a little bit every year? Uh, yeah, the way it, it's a long involved process, but basically the way that the Department of Revenue has valued them is using net book value, which is basically their original purchase price less their depreciation is all that they pay taxes on. And the ATB, I, it, it doesn't make any kind of sense at all. to a normal, the ATB has ruled that what they wanna do now is figure out the replacement cost new, depreciate that, take half of that value plus half of the net book value and bill them at that rate. It's amounting to about a 30% increase in what they pay in okay. communities that have already implemented it. And how does that compare to the 10,000 that it would cost to do it? Uh, actually, I'm not, I don't have those numbers on the top of my head. Okay. I wanna say that it would probably be about Two to three million dollars in additional value, which would be between twenty-four and thirty-six thousand a year. Oh, okay. I mean, it's something that we can do in office at this point. Oh. Uh, but it's it's time consuming. Mm. And at speaking of time consuming, I I looked up, I did some a little bit of research on the town employees, and I was a little up slightly upset to find out that only my office, I'm the only department head at 35 hours a week that's not elected in town. Everybody else has been boosted to 37 and a half or 40 in the last few years, or they're elected. Hmm. Okay. Which was a little upsetting yep. to find out where people are saying, well, you've got to put more hours in to get the job done but you're getting paid two and a half to five hours less than everybody else. That doesn't sound right. And you are at 37 and a half for- um... For 22, it's recommended for 37 yeah. and a half. Yeah, yeah. but okay. this is, everybody's mean, been at 40 for 21, 20, 19. Oh, you meant currently. Back. Currently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure you didn't miss that. Okay, so I need to follow what you're saying. So. Your current, you were a while ago at 35. Now you're currently at 37 and a half. Uh, no, right now I'm at 35. Right now you're at 35 dollars. There's only three department heads at, at 35. Okay. For this fiscal year. And are you do what? I mean, how are you getting things? Just like you said, you're busy. So, um, how is it working for you, Dan? You're constantly over. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I, I've been coming in early, working through lunch and working at home at night or staying later in the office. To get your job done. Or how get, are you getting fixing that? Are you using comp time? Uh, they pulled comp time from us. Comp time. Okay. Well, flex time, but flex I time. haven't been 
been taking that for most of the day or most of the time. Okay, so 37 and a half hours. Now, where are you coming? Where, where, I'm not quite understanding where you came up with 40. You, you mentioned 40 hours. Where does that fall in? Uh, right now, I'm basically working over 40 hours a week. Okay. And have been for since pre-COVID. Okay. And so your hours really, when, when, when we're talking about hours, the um, mention of keeping the town hall open longer or shorter, that, that's not really have anything to do with how many hours you're working. It's you need those hours. Is that correct? Yeah. The, I mean, I'm usually there by shortly after eight every day as it is now. Okay. Okay. Um, so how, how can we fix that? Uh, I don't have a problem with what Carolyn's recommending going to 37 and a half. Hmm. Will that cover all the hours? If you're working over 40, it almost sounds like it should be a, a staffing question. There's this much work. Well, since I've started, the hours in my office have been reduced by about 30% since 1990. Hmm. Okay. I, I was reduced from, I, when I initially was hired, I was at 37 and a half. Can I ask a question? The, the change that's on this, uh, the 5,400, that is not, does that include the 37 or that is not including? That's other additional? That's the 37 and a half plus, I think the one and a half percent COLA. Fine. Okay. All right. So can we get a cost out on going to 37.5 if you're and and town manager administrator rather is it is recommending that also or is Yeah, that that no, that's what she has in there. That's what's in there. Okay. Administrator recommended. Okay, so that's already in there. Okay. It's both it's both gotcha. it's got both in there. Okay. Two and a half hours a week and the 1.5%. Fine. Okay. okay. All right. But can I? Do you, do you mind if I just ask about this? So, if he's working forty hours or more a week, and we're only paying him for thirty-seven five, that just strikes me as something we need to fix. He needs to be uh, personally. I feel like he needs to be paid for what he's doing, and not underpaid. Right. Can can I can I explain kind of the thought process since I've been here, Valerie? Yes, so please. there's a lot of you, you. Like Dan said, you've got some department heads at 35, and or and maybe some other um, uh, staff that work at a higher level than um, not higher level than a director, but higher level, um, so that they they're hired at 35 and could be at 37.5. But I'm focusing right now on the department heads because there is that inconsistency. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you um, what Dan's telling you. You'll. You, you will hear it, and I think you have heard it, that many of the directors um, are working, the department heads are working more than they're paid for. Yeah, I, and what I, was happening with the comp time was they were building up comp time, but it was impossible for them to even take the comp time, to even use it. Mm -hmm. So when the previous HR director was here, the, um, our temporary the interim, that was her recommendation after many years is limit it so, and then work this year to get them paid for the hours that they are actually working. Um, Cause that's the challenge that you'll see is for any of these department heads to use all the comp time that they're accumulating every single week, all year long. Mm -hmm. They can't be away from their office that long to, to even, even take any advantage of that comp time. And so the goal is to get everybody typically in a, mm -hmm. in a town hall or a town you'll see uh, full-time employees at 37.5. It's, it's, it just provides consistency, um, but it also helps the, the town buildings open up earlier. Those that are accessible, you know, that are, are open to the public like that, you know, is to be able to have the town hall open at 8.30 versus nine. Okay. 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 Can I, can I speak for a minute? Sure. Uh, I don't. I don't see a problem with thirty-seven and a half. If that's the goal, is to get everybody eventually to that point. Uh, I don't see a problem with that. 
It's just I, I have a somewhat of an issue getting paid for 35 and putting in 40, 41, 42. I'm, I'm content with the 37 and a half. Okay. Okay. Um, and it looks like Dan, everything else on your, on your budget pretty much is the same. So it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of questions there um, unless you have anything else to add. No, the only, the only other thing is for clerical wages. At some point we would probably need to see uh, a bump up in the number of hours there. Right now, that's a shared position with the town clerk and the select board office. And we're not sure when the individual in that position is going to going to retire. And I think there, when that happens, there need, we need to reevaluate the three departments. So tell me a little bit about the clerical wages. So who, who, how many hours is that total? Uh, it's five hours for me. And then there's select board is five hours, which is the same amount. And the town clerk has 10 hours in her budget, which is a slightly higher rate. So five hours a week for you, five hours for the clerk and five hours for who else? Uh, five hours for the selectman and 10 hours for the clerk. 10 hours for the clerk and five hours for the selectman. Yes. Traditionally though, the select board gives the hours to the other departments and do not in the past, Janice has not really been working for us. Oh, it's, so it's not Jennifer's. I thought maybe that meant Jennifer. Okay. No, it's uh, Janice. Oh, it's Janice. Yep. So, so five hours for Dan, 10 hours to clerk and five hours to Janice. And that makes up that, that right there. So Dan, I'm kind of a little off here. So if you're doing 37, if you end up doing 37 and a half hours, plus we pay you five hours a week, you're at 42.5 well, no, the five, the five hours is for Janice. Oh. Janice is the, the clerical. And how, so there's nothing there for you? Uh, no, my line is just the one line. Oh, oh, I see. When I put down Dan, yeah. it meant Janice. Okay. Yeah, Janice is, is the clerical wages. Janice is clerical in your department. Oh, okay. All right. So then for for that five hours uh, or for the, uh, the select board hours, that extra five hours somehow goes to someone else. You said it goes, to, you, the select board doesn't really use it, but they say, oh, it's just in there for like a buffer. It's a, no? it's more of a, a float position used okay. on the first floor. So, okay. Or if the selectmen have something that needs to be done. Otherwise, most of it is spent in my office or uh, a lot of it is probably spent in the clerk's office. Okay. So where's Janice on here? Uh, clerical wages. That's so that's all she is, is she gets 50. five hours a week? Uh, five hours for me, but there's five hours in the select board and 10 hours in the clerk. So I have to, see, okay, so, all right. So how, how and, and, and uh, Carolyn might know, how, how much does Janice work total? So we have not, since I've been here, um, we have not used her in the select board office because the need has been we pay for those hours, but they aren't, haven't been used in the select board, uh, for the select board. Um, but they are, she's using them for the work she's doing in those other departments. It's just that we're paying for it out of our budget. Did you take it out of your budget for this year? Are you no, going to end up? Not, it's in our budget. Okay. Is there a reason why we can't put her in a certain, wherever she most likely works? Actually, Jennifer and I were talking about about 15 minutes ago. So yes, we could, we can do that. This was what made it very difficult last year was Dee Dee did the same similar situation. She was all over the place and I couldn't figure out where she was. And then, and she didn't have enough hours, but then next thing you know, she was over 40 hours. And it's just, it's, it's, it's gets to be difficult to figure out when, when you're shared like that. 
mm -hmm. where you are. So, yeah, that's good. If we can, I, I'd like to revisit and we'll talk, discuss this more about, you know, those type hours on, um, I guess on uh, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. After we see everybody's budget, so. Yeah, Janice is 20 hours total. 20 hours total. It has been since, I think it was 05. I know she's on Conservation Commission. Oh, no, that's Janice Stone. That's oh, a that's a different Janice. Janice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, Amy, we when we do the uh, finance worksheet, Ed, if Carolyn is does want to realign those, we'll... We'll get that with comments. We'll, we'll get them into the right columns if Carolyn wants to make those changes and have it be ready for for your meeting next week. Yeah. I think, okay. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. <laughs> I, I, some of these are easy. I know who Dan I is. Know. I know who the clerk is. I know, I know. Who, but some of the extras, when they do all over the place, I don't, I get confused. We, all, old habits, Amy, I don't know. It, right. it, is, it is hard. <laughs> I think we need to do first initial last name. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So I'm, uh, unless, does anybody else have any questions for Dan? None. No, I'm, I'm okay. good. And thank you, Dan, for your work. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. Okay. Uh, how about the Board of Appeals? Do we have anyone here from the Board of Appeals? Well, there you can see why. Yes. Yep. So I guess they're good with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, come on. Let's see if we can save a dollar here, you know? Well, here's, here is something. It is something that we're, I don't think we're going to discuss too much right now with, um, you know, tonight, but the, I, and, and I guess we, I need to be clear on this. The salary for board of appeals, is that a stipend? For the zoning board of appeals, or yes. do they have do they have someone that's an employee that does work kind of like Janice over in conservation commission? Well, uh, at the risk of being confusing again, this this is the uh, the appointed people's stipends, mm -hmm. and their support is um, DD provides the support. Okay. Through the uh, through the building inspector's office. Um, she isn't paid from them though, because it's not, uh, it's, it's infrequent. Uh, it's not frequent enough for them to, to have the hours in there that aren't going to be used. All right. Um, it, that is one thing that if it's, if it's Didi getting paid, I would, I would think that's fine. And we should know that how many hours and it is Didi so that we can add it onto her. So we know that, you know, is she a 40 hours if that's what it was. Um, but this is one of the only boards that, um, that kind of got missed. Okay. So when we did away with the stipends, now I do believe that we should revisit it and we should look at it and, and I'm all for that. And I know that assessors ask for every single time. And I think we should look at it down the road. I don't think this might be the year, but we should discuss it. Um, um, on a non-budget um, non time. But um, we, we had removed all the stipends from all the boards, except for one, the planning board. That was it because they were a working planning board. It was a little bit different because we didn't have a planner. So we had a working planning board. So we kept theirs. Other than that, we removed park and rec. We removed the select board. We removed assessors. We removed everyone. But I don't believe we removed the zoning board of appeals. Well, yeah, I didn't mean to make it sound like Dee Dee was doing the substantive work for them. You know, she'll take care of the mailings and various things like that. Yep. So, but so it is a working board. They write their own opinions. They just don't have as much um, coming before them as I, I don't think they meet as regularly. Well, certainly not like the planning board. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's uh, skip over the uh we can pass this unless anyone else wants to talk about it any other questions no no none okay so let's go right to conservation 
And as looking at seeing who's here, I don't believe anyone from conservation is here either. This would be the other Janice. Right? <laughs> Janice go. or, uh, no, or Paulette, I don't see her here. Okay. No. Okay. So um, since they're not here, I do want to discuss, this is something we, I think we could discuss um, and it would be a question to them. Uh, I happen to be listening and hearing about a lot of stuff that's happening. All of a sudden in town, we're going to be getting a lot more fees coming in for the, um, to pay for Janice. Uh, they're getting, a, um, because yeah, and it is, they do, will have some more work to do, but um, they will be getting a lot in fees due to um, all the campers out on the um, riverfront. Do we need to, since their funding is going up, since they have all this funding, they might not need all this money here. They might, they, I mean, they're going to get more in fees. They might need they said it's for their, when I, and it was asked that fee that they receive, half of it goes to the state and half of it goes to them to support Janice and their, um, you know, their office and, and to support their paperwork. If they're receiving all this extra money, they, they, they might be fine. They might not need the extra is my thought. I'm not sure that that's the same as this, as this top line. You, oh, okay. Now, does anyone else know? I, I, I think, may, why don't, should we see if uh, we reach out and see if they'll come to tomorrow night's meeting? Because I think there are some things there that you've raised some good points and I'm not sure exactly how this lines up. I don't know if their fees go into the general fund and this is paying them. I thought, I, I heard the same meeting as you, Amy, and I thought they heard that those were going into a, 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 a separate fund and then she's paid out of that, but. Just Susan, you know? I think their funds go into a general fund and it's a contract for Janice. Well, it isn't the way she expressed it. Maybe yeah. that's how they think of it though. I don't mean Janice, but I, I, I was getting confused by the same thing that Amy heard. They Amy. said that those fees pay her yeah, pay for Janice. I think, and I that's not all, exactly true. If yeah, it's I think we all fund. kind of went, mm -hmm. so you know what, Amy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, get more information for you guys. Maybe I'll have it by tomorrow, but let me find out exactly what they meant by that because it's not typically how it works, especially with a general fund allocation like that. Um, so I, I'm curious about it. So yeah. I'd like to get some more information for you guys. I think we need to get them in. Yeah, so if they receive, and, and even the, if they have some type of a revolving fund or they have something where they get fees coming in, and it goes to a general fund. It's not going to our general fund. It's not going in our, you're not saying it's going into our um, uh, revenues, correct? It's going back to them. It's in their, their like revolving fund, I would think, revolving. And if it stays with Conservation Commission and it's in their revolving fund, then they should have enough money that they don't need these types of things. The dues, uh, they, maybe maybe we need to look at this. Maybe they don't need to be funded from this. Let's, I just wanna know where their money yeah. goes to. So all the money yeah. that they collect, do they keep? Not all of it, but- It goes into it, it our- It depends on the kind of fee. That's, I, and I honestly can't answer okay. it. I, we need to get them, we need okay. to get them in. Okay, great. I, I'm just confused where the revenues yeah. go. We, we take in some in the general fund, but they have certain fees they collect, they hold in certain other special revenue funds. And then they, I do know that they do make some payments out of that. How it all lines up with it, with uh, Janice, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, so, but that's, I think that, yeah, let's try, let's see if we can get them to explain it and then we'll all know. Okay, great. Let's keep going. Let's see, <laughs> planning board. All right, I think we saw Bill here. So Jim, uh, Jim, Jim Maximoski is here as well. Oh, okay, sorry, Jim. <laughs> so, well, Hi, you guys. can see our budget is, for the most part, level funded across the across the board. Um, okay. Except for a eighty nine dollar increase in administrative assistant, everything else is the same. 
All right. Uh, do you want to um, tell us just what your thoughts are on just because it was up for discussion last year on a planning person? Are you going to be maybe this year just when you discuss it amongst yourselves, thinking about it for maybe the next year's budget? Not this year's budget. Maybe next year's budget. Okay. And we're looking. We're, we don't have the load for a full-time planner. Mm -hmm. It would have to be some kind of a part-time planner. Possibly we could contract more with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. We're not really sure at this point, but to hire a full-time planner for the town in my estimation would be probably not a cost-effective method right now. Um, okay. It, it would, to, to keep them busy, we would have to look for busy work to keep them going. And that's not what we want. We want somebody that's going to be productive for, the, for what we need, as opposed to just hiring somebody to do that kind of work. I don't think it would be shared with somebody else for something else. Uh, I don't have that answer. Okay. So I've given it some thought and ideally what we need right now is someone like Janice Stone is to the Conservation Commission. She works one day a week, she attends meetings, she's very well versed in the nuts and bolts of running Conservation Commission hearings. Um, she is available to talk to people during the day and um, you know she takes care of uh, their certain amount of their clerical work, getting notices out. Um, there are a lot of things that can be done at that level, which ties in rather neatly with the bigger topic about uh, finding a way to make a creative use of support staff in town hall. Um, I think several departments have a need for a bit of help. <clears throat> and um, I think that that's really, I think, where we want to be focusing attention going forward. So right now, Didi, um, I write the decisions, file them with the clerk, and then uh, Didi stuffs the envelopes and gets them out the door. Um, but that's about the level of support we have. Um, she, uh, she does less for us than she does for the ZBA because Jim sends out all of the decisions, all of the notices of public hearings to the abutters and the like. So, uh, um, so we need, we need assistance, but we don't need full-time assistance. And we need assistance at the level a lot of other boards seem to be needing as well. So that's going to be the future um, hole to fill. So, so how many hours are we talking five hours about? Is that what uh, it kind of? tops probably okay it's it's hard to say because uh, you know we uh we're very cyclical in um uh right now we seem to be doing uh an accessory apartment special permit every meeting uh i filed five decisions with the town clerk a couple of weeks ago um but before that, everything had been pretty quiet. No one wanted to, we, have, we don't have a lot of other, other work in the hopper at the moment, but we're starting to get calls. I, I, I am the daytime contact and I take calls at, at work because I have an understanding boss. Um, <laughs> the, um, yeah, we're getting more calls. Uh, we're getting calls from architects and engineers who want to know how the zoning bylaw might affect a plan they are just starting to work on. So uh, I'm visualizing probably by this time next year we'll have a uh, we'll have a fuller plate than we do now. Okay. A comment about advertising. As you can see, the last several years, our advertising budget has exceeded what we're um, allotted. We simply ask for transfers. That something that, according to like, and similar to what Bill said, we really have no control over because we pay for the legal advertising, and that's taken in, paid for by the applicant as part of the fees, which goes into the general fund. Part of the problem that you're going to see with advertising across any board that is advertising in the Gazette now. About 18 months ago, a legal, a normal legal ad for the planning board would be about 
maybe two hundred dollars. In the last year since COVID has hit, and with the new ownership of the Gazette, our ad, our legal ads now are approximately the same size, but the last several we've d used have been between three hundred and twenty and three hundred and forty nine dollars. So their ad legal advertising costs have gone up tremendously. The small legal ad we just put into the Gazette um, last Friday for the zoning article is $708. So they're getting very pricey. We don't have much choice. They're, they're, they're the only item on the block, if you would. Mm -hmm. So that's just a comment to be aware we're going to be, you know, we're going to exceed it again this year. Well, it seems to me like maybe we should just increase that line. It's not by a lot, but, you know, instead of constantly asking for transfers, to me, it sounds like because I could see the actual in 2019, I could see the actual in 2020, um, we should probably just I I increase that um, just because that makes sense. I don't, you know, instead of there's not everything goes up. Um, you're not really changing anything. This is looks like what your history is doing. So, okay, we could look at that and maybe possibly discuss if that's where that needs to be after. That's a good point. So I would also just make a comment. Um, we're keeping our planning services. So planning services is the contract we have with the Pine Valley Planning Commission to get... Um, ongoing consultation with someone who is very experienced in things like preparing drafting zoning bylaws. Um, we get, um, we, we've had, uh, Jim, if we had 7,500 from the start or we were up, if, up a little higher at one point, weren't mm -hmm. we? 19. Um, so we had, had been planning to ask for an increase in that because we were getting less bang for the buck because their fees were going up. So the hourly rate of the person we contract with had gone up. So we were getting fewer hours for the same amount. Um, the COVID era has been a blessing in disguise in that limited regard because our um, we're not being billed for the uh, travel time for our consult consultant to go from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to our meeting place. He just logs in on Zoom. So um, if we start to go back to in-person meetings, we're, get, we're gonna get less, less for our money. Uh, so we, we'll probably be talking about that as maybe something that will need to go up in the future. But for now, again, it's, we're holding fast on it. Okay. When we start approaching our limits, we just stop calling uh, Ken. Just decide, okay, you've done enough work for this year, so we'll uh, we're just putting down the phone or the emails, and uh, and we'll pick up next year where we left off. Okay, I know that I thought we talked about last year. We wanted. You know, we talked about increasing their services because we wanted to push off the planner. And I and I, I remember hearing that story. And then I do remember that really um, one of the reasons why the planner was important was because you guys weren't going to be around forever. Uh, I thought that that was you guys have been doing it for so long and you've held Hadley, you know, in, in its place. But down the road, we can't depend on you forever. So, you you know, my understanding is we're supposed to look for plan B. <laughs> I think they changed their mind. Oh, yeah. OK. Yeah, they're we're going gonna... to be around forever now. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I decided I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> you know, I, I just would like to ask a question about the um, uh, changing back from Zoom to in-person meetings. Is there any reason why you just can't zoom him into your meeting? So just to save the cost of his travel? Uh, we don't know. We've, we went from 100% in-person to 100% Zoom. Uh, I have no experience in running a hybrid meeting where some participants are on Zoom and some are not. Um, it may well be possible. Uh, I, we'll certainly talk with Hadley Media 
as we come closer to a uh, possible resumption of in-person meetings, we'll talk with Hadley Media about what's, what's available. And uh, I've been told that the library has uh, impressive AV facilities uh, that um, maybe not even they know how to, how to operate quite yet. So um, it may be very easy to do it. Right now, I would visualize maybe bringing in my, my laptop or someone's laptop and setting it up as a, as a sixth talking head. Mm -hmm. But um, there may, I'm sure there may be a better way to do it. Um, I just want to be mindful that we're not trying to create a solution to save, spend a thousand dollars to save a few hundred. But I think mm -hmm. it will probably be something that will be of interest to other boards as well. Um, we certainly had surveyors tell us that they are so pleased with Zoom because they can attend three hearings in three separate towns on the same night, which for when the surveyor is driving from where, that's, that's not an option for him um, in the time of in-person meeting. So we, we may keep some sort of Zoom component um, I'd like to explore it because, uh, for example, last night we were talking with uh, an engineer who is uh, redesigning the drive, drive up and pick up uh, zone at Target. I honestly don't know where he was from, but he certainly wasn't going to travel uh, you know, 1,500 miles to sit down and talk to us for 15 minutes. But... Mm -hmm we were able to have a complete discussion with him and improve the design. And um, so, yeah, I, I'd certainly be looking forward to exploring that option. Um, hopefully the public meeting law will have that on the table when, when things clear up. Well, all right, I think uh, that's that's awesome. So, well, thank you very much for your budget. Does anybody have any more questions? Any questions? No? Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll keep moving along. Um, let's see. I did see a comment here um, that Board of Health might be here. Um, that I. Uh, might have missed them, but I think we saw Board of Health the other day. No, Amy, when you were talking about um, the only board that was still paid, Board of Health is still paid as well. Oh, well, thank you for that, Sue. I did not know that. Okay, okay. So uh, let's see, we'll keep going and let's do tax collector. So Sue, let's do yours. Let's see. Great. Uh, give me just a moment. There we go. You're muted, Susan. I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so um, changes. Uh, I am now appointed by the select board. So there is a contract um, and that uh, the FY22 administ uh, administrator recommended is 37 and a half hours a week. Um, the next one is uh, Kim, my assistant. Um, she she was given the one and a half percent um, cola. Uh, if we're doing if if we're actually doing level services, I would love to see that go to thirty seven and a half as well because both of us were slated uh, in David's last year's budget to go to thirty seven and a half hours a week because we're working all of that. 
um, and uh, he pulled that out at the end. So um, I reduced my tech support maintenance um, by $200 because I was concerned about the year before I was concerned about our conversion to Vadar um, and we're, we're there right now. Um, the only other, let's see, the other change is uh, in office supplies, David had pulled uh, $175 out. Those are my envelopes and my toner. <laughs> um, I can't issue bills without envelopes and toner. So, uh, and then our dues were reduced at least this year. Um, so uh, I, I took $30 off of that. That's where I'm at. So before Sue, you were at only 35 hours? Yes. Okay. Then I'm uh, just, just throwing it out there. So Dan, I thought he said he was the only one that was at 35 hours. I thought he said everybody else was that, at 37. That wasn't elected. Oh. Okay. Um, I was uh, elected up until last week. Okay. Okay. So your hours, once again, see, because, you know, I, at first I was thinking in my own head, I'm not thinking, why do we really need to open town hall for more hours? Yes, you know, it is good for people, but people have been used to being closed all this time, a whole year. But um, your, your hours, but it sounds to me like yours and Dan's hours has nothing to do with the hours of town hall. You need these hours to get your job done. Absolutely. Okay. And, I mean, and I'm, you know, I've taken on the, uh, the insurance portion. Um, that was my previous profession. Um, and that just adds on, but we need to get certain things. Um, we need to get certain things straightened out there to be able to bring our insurance costs under control as far as property and casualty and liability costs. Um, and I, you know, I've, I've spent numerous hours on that. Um, yeah. we're, we're all, we're all trying to work as a team here. Yeah, no, you guys have helped out. I, especially with Carolyn being new, you guys have all jumped in and I, we see it all the time that you guys have been putting in extra hours. So um, just to make sure I understand, so the water sewer bill coordinator, that is how many, uh, and who's that that does that for you? That's Kim. That's, That's my Kim. assistant. She's also the assistant collector, water sewer billing coordinator. Um, Kim is at 35 hours a week. Um, if you'll recall, uh, Two and a half years ago, when we went to quarterly billing, I was looking to see, to looking to expand our our numbers, and uh, they're just, you know, it didn't happen. Yeah. Um, and particularly right now, I would love to see Kim at thirty-seven and a half hours because we have new with Sharon's retirement in the water department. Um, we have new people down there and. I it, just today, Kim resolved something that saved us probably forty five hundred dollars uh, for water. So, um, it it would be nice to see her funded to thirty seven and a half. Every you know every other person in town hall um, will be in this budget, but okay. I just want to throw that out there. So this, this, that line item is all her, correct? That um, water sewer bill coordinator, is that all her? Yes. Okay. So why, and, and that's just that, because when you mentioned you would like the increase, that's not the increase. That, that's on, in, in addition to this, I believe. So that, why, why? That amount did, is at 35 hours a week. That amount's at 35. That's what I thought. Why, I'm just curious, um, why did we only put um, a 1.11% increase? Isn't everybody a 1.5? I think the numbers were incorrect. Linda, can you help me out? 
Um, she's not really at 46.018 this year. The, the, cal the calculation for 21 was was over what she's actually receiving. So the one and a half, it is, she is getting a one and a half percent increase over what she's actually receiving. Okay. It, it, it's just a little bit, but you know, I, we're, we're trying. I just, it, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. As long as that's what that is, it doesn't yeah. really matter. I just brought it up to question it just to make sure she's on the same page as everyone right. else. Right, I understand. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I, I don't have any other questions. Anybody Thank else? You. I'm good. Good report. Thank you. All right. So, all right. So, uh, we'll keep moving and then we'll, uh, we'll discuss all this again in just a little bit. <laughs> all right. So let's go to Jessica. Is she with us? Town clerk. Yes, I'm here. Oh, great. All right, Jess. Linda, you pull up Jess's. All right, there's not much change to my town clerk budget. Um, I decreased a few of the line items just because those are kind of bi yearly. Um, I just hope that when I decrease them, that when the time comes, that they're allowed back in the budget. Mm -hmm. um, but everything else is pretty much level funded. I was also one of those 35 hour a week positions. So the difference in my salary is the extra two and a half hours plus the 1.5. Okay. All right. So, so Jess, I just have a few questions regarding yours um, because you are again, one of those people that's, Dan mentioned that you do, an additional 10 hours or you do more money or you do more hours in the assessor's budget. Am I adding that 10 hours to your 37 and a half hours? No, that's separate. I have two temporary, I have two employees. I have Pat, who's kind of my clerical in my office for 10 hours a week. And Janice is my assistant clerk and she gets 10 hours a week. And that's both out of the temporary wages. So that's already in there. And okay. you can see there's an increase from 20 FY 2020 because initially Janice was split, I think 10 hours of the select board, five hours with me and five hours for Dan. But as you said, they said they weren't, the select board wasn't using her as much. So I took five of those hours out of the select board budget, added it to mine, just because I'm kind of in the same position where we don't know when Janice and Pat is going to retire. I needed those 20 hours in there to get a assistant clerk slash clerical help. Okay. All right. And let's see. And then you have the, the stipends and board of health. Let's see, what are the stipends? I have a $300 stipend for the board of health for being their burial agent. Okay. And I have a board of registrar stipend. Those are not included in the salary. Those are taken from other departments. Okay. And is that on a, is that going to be a, a, a current yearly thing or is that just per, is that just a one-time thing because of the project? No, that's yearly. That's yearly. Is that, is that new this year or has that ha been happening every year? That's well, been happening every year. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess I just noticed it because you put it down at the bottom. <laughs> you mentioned it. Okay. Um, all right. I don't have any other questions for Jess. Does anybody else? None. I mean, if you want, I can go through the board of registrars one quick, if you have any questions regarding that. Oh, that's great. So obviously there is going to be a decrease this year because last year was a cluster with all the elections. Mm -hmm. um, Next year, I believe we only have our annual town election. So that shows the decrease. But like everyone mentioned, I am, like Bill mentioned with Fanning, I am astounded on how much of an increase from our vendors that I'm seeing. I mean, for example, our street books, which we sell for $10, which we used to buy for $5 a piece, are now over $10. 
So okay. I mean, that's a little, it's a little kind of sticker shock for me with all these increases. Yeah. All right. So at least if we're going to go into a year that's a tough year, at least it's not a, a year that a, a big voting year. So exactly. we saved on that time. That's good. All right. Well, it's been working out really nice in the in the um, senior center. It's, it seems like it's nice and smooth. Very positive. Very positive. Yeah. Great. All right. Does anybody else have any questions? None. All right, this is moving right along. Thanks, Jess. Thank you. Thank you. All right, town treasurer. All right, Linda. Uh, Linda, you're on mute. There. Okay. Um, so my salary is 75,000. Uh, top line is just me. I have a contract. I've had it for a couple of years and um, the increase is the same as others. So that's one and a half percent. Uh, then the next line, it has its own line because it's a, it's a new, it's, it's a new category, the select board and, um, and Carolyn asked me to take on some of these financial areas. I've been doing the regular financial reporting that David used to do. And I've taken over a, a lot of, not the decision part, but I've taken over a lot of the, uh, sort of spearheading the, uh, budget process. And, and getting together the revenues and expenses and coming up with the worksheets and communications and basically mechanically running this budget along um, in a way, again, David used to do. And in the process of doing that, because it's so hard to work with someone else's spreadsheets, I've actually done a lot of changes in the spreadsheets. So it's taken, um, it has taken a lot of extra time. I did go in and speak with select board. I did have a, I do have a clause on my contract for uh, work that is above treasurers to be just to have a stipend discussed. And uh, we agreed on a $5,000 stipend. Um, they actually agreed on it for this year too. We haven't quite figured where that's coming from, but that would be for FY21. And if it stays with me, that that would be in um, for 22 as well. The reason I wanted a stipend as opposed to adding to salary, because I don't think it's really something that we want to add permanently to the uh, treasurer's job. Um, I don't think it's, a, it's not an accurate description of the position, the way things are running in Hadley. If there was to be another treasurer or something probably would be different, done differently with running the budget and doing the financial reports. We might be at a point there when we have a finance director and, or, um, or maybe the town administration administrator's um, department would be set up differently. Um, maybe we'd be doing something different with um, other uh, financial department heads in town. So this keeps it as a, as a module that could go in another direction if it seemed appropriate. Um, I also didn't want it to necessarily agree that I was going to take on this permanently without because of all the extra time that is taken. Okay. Um, uh, assistant treasurer. Uh, Linda, um, I would just like to say thank you. I know that this has been a rough year, you know, not only because of COVID and everything, but because of this, you know, switch over from David to Carolyn. And I appreciate you stepping into the void and uh, helping to make that transition more smooth. I know it's a lot more work for you. Thank you. I actually think uh, I, I think it's working well. I, I'm I'm, en I'm enjoying it, and I'm also uh, happy that Carolyn has got the uh, time and attention to devote to many, many, many other projects. Um, it uh, uh, maybe uh, r relieves one area for her, but uh, she keeps plenty busy. <laughs> with that. So I'm I'm very I'm glad that it I'm glad that it's worked out and uh, it it has been enjoyable. But I think we need to keep this in, in perspective going forward and and really see with the town growing and with, with these areas and um, this is 
you know, we, we want to be careful not to do too many things in, in little silos. Town hall uh, as, as general and the departments running out of town hall, um, they do need the support as you're hearing from other departments um, and other department heads and the extra things that they're taking on. So this, this is what's happening in my corner, but I do see this as a, a larger issue. I, you know, I would like to participate in, in um, helping solve um, in town hall in general before I leave. Um, uh, next is the uh, assistant treasurer. That's a position that when we split it up, um, I went from, I was given 20 hours and because of the issues it went down to 10 and then down to five. Um, and with, with COVID, we just, uh, I, I just said, I'll, I'll, I'll do the, I'll do it myself. That was before we took on the budget. So I, yeah, I have been, a, I have been kind of um, overwhelmed with things. The 5907 are, are DD hours. DD is not going to work for treasurer anymore. It's, it's both not enough. It's, it's not enough for the support. And if I continue taking on other projects, um, she's going to now get paid out of, I think you, you did her budget, she's going to get paid out of inspectors and planning board. Um, but I'm now, instead of five hours, I'm going to have 14 hours. Where this is coming from, this is an agreement worked out with DPW. Chris Okafer had uh, two full-time people assisting down in highway. One of them said she didn't have enough to do. Someone else retired. We just sort of gener generally shuffled things around. And before she left, Deb, Brad Deb Radway, who was uh, temporarily in as the HR director, worked this out with Chris that with two hours, two days a week, someone working in, 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 up in my office and three days a week down in hers. And he was agreeable to it. So that is not actually to the overall budget. That's not extra funding. It is obviously a benefit to my, to my office. Um, uh, but yeah, so uh, that's, that's actually started already. Is covered oh, you're by. telling us we're going to, we're going to see a decrease in the DPW. We have to look. I, I'm not going to tell you that. Oh, mm. um, I think you're not going to see, you're going to see a decrease on that line item. I, I think that he's got a number of different ways to spend. You'll be doing his budget tomorrow night. Okay. I mean that. And we'll address that change and how it. Right. DPW. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I mean, if, if we were all held to strictly level funding, I would say that's level funding that's coming out of there and going here. It, it started out that way, but I think that there's been a lot. You, you'll hear more what's going on down in Highway and uh, and the projects and the various things they're taking on. Um, it's yeah, um, and that line item, the, the assistance, yes, but within his overall budget, um, he he's got other increases, so. Okay. Um, we'll deal with that separately. Um, on the others, well, let's see, I just, mm, other, I guess there are some things I wasn't using, they came out. Um, I have, uh, I did, you know, we haven't really been using the tuition in meetings and we didn't under COVID, a lot of that money that we already had is coming out. There have been um, uh, various meetings that I have not gone to be before I was certified. I'm certified now. So I did put in some, uh, increase the tuition and meetings so that I could um, get to some of these uh, longer conventions that the other department heads in our in town hall are doing. It's um, not, not critical to me, but I, I know that it's something where um, we have been encouraged to um, do more in the way of professional training. And so I put that in there. I don't know where I'll get a week to go to these things, but um, uh, it's, it's in there. Um, payroll services aren't with us anymore. The financial services we pay for on the 5313 line, that is, it covers the annual review that we have done on, on our OPEB. It's like, a, it's, they don't call it an audit, but it's virtually an audit of where we stand with OPEB. And the other that we pay out of that is, um, Unibank uh, Financial Services, they are, that's David Eisenthal's group. They do our um, annual continuing disclosure, uh, which is an SEC requirement when we have, when we do the bonding. Um, that's, well, we take care of that every year. So one's 3,600, one's 2,400. 
is, yeah. Or maybe they're a hundred less or so, but that's about right for, for those. Software maintenance is the VADAR um, accounting system and office supplies. Um, yeah, toner, paper, envelopes, checks, various, uh, a lot of the supplies to, to run it. I usually don't spend the whole thing, but then uh, sometimes, oh, it looks like I spent 778 last year. So I didn't, I kept it down at the thousand that I've had the last few years. Um, that's about it. Oh, the uh, bottom one, the borrowing fee, that's going down because the borrowing fee is just on the short-term borrowing. And in the last few years, you see it's been higher. That's because as we were building up to the bonds for the buildings, we were doing uh, sort of a lot of rollover um, bands, the, the, the bond anticipatory notes, the short-term borrowing, and each of those costs 550. So uh, you'll see in 20, in, in fiscal 20, we actually had four of them, or maybe even five actually, um, that were rolling over la that year. Last year, or, or this current year, 21, we'll have three bands, either closing or rolling over. Um, next year, we will only have one or two, because as we got the bonds, the short-term borrowings were paid off. And um, we do have one coming due in, one more coming due in September that will be paid off. So yeah, there's there will be two for 22. Yeah, so 11, 1100. Well, won't we be doing a little bit more in uh, the borrowing, Linda, uh, for you know capital projects? Once we start paying down, we want to put more in. We will. Um, it's it's due. I mean, the uh, the fee is based on the bar, the actual note that we take out, not the amount of it. So we do have more borrowing, but we're we're still going to concentrate try and concentrate all of our borrowing to as few times a year as possible. One reason I like to do the late May, early June borrowing is by then, like right now, I've been asking each department head where we have authorized but unborrowed funds at this point. Um, do you, are you really going to get that by June 30th? Because if you don't have that, if, if we aren't going to purchase this by June 30th, we get to bump it into, I don't have to borrow it this year and I won't borrow it this year because we're just gonna be carrying the interest. So one big one that we just, uh, because of where we are in the process, um, you know, remember we had the $105,000 uh, emergency generator for the fire safety. It's underway and it's happening, but it's not going to happen until uh, July or August. So we're definitely not going to borrow for that this year. So I just found that out this week. So um, borrowing in June really works for us at saving at saving money. And even though we will be having more capital items, Amy will 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 borrow them all at the same time. The reason it didn't work that way with the building is because we were doing we were doing multi-million dollar borrowings at a time. And so we didn't want to borrow all the money in June and then be sitting on millions of dollars for months. It made more sense in saving the interest that we borrow our two million and in three, four months we borrow another two million. So we were doing it like that. And it was a savings to us to do it that way. But normally it's uh, more efficient for us to borrow less often and towards the end of the year. All right. Well, you've answered a lot of questions as we went down, so I don't really have any left. <laughs> Does anyone else have questions? No. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's keep moving. Let's go to the next one. I lost my place. So where are we here? It says uh, town building and operations. And insurance. 190. This is the big, long, the long one. I just, didn't, I don't mean big budget. I mean, it's a long. Lot to long, it. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Just, All right. So ah. we'll speak to this one. I don't know. I can, I, you I, want to speak, Carolyn? Yeah, Amy, I can kind of, this one, um, the, in the maybe two months ago, I, uh, you know, I, I told you we've been working collaboratively to look at each budget. This one was where um, I think we had Mary the accountant, Linda and Jennifer, um, since those are the key players in how, who pays these bills and knows the history. And the approach we took on this was as well was where can we combine some line items, even within this area, just to keep it simple. 
And then where can we um, move some things back to a department's budget? So there was a method to all of its madness, but all of those gray areas have some kind of either moved from a budget into this budget or out of it or merged within this budget. So I'm gonna go over some of those things with you, okay? Um, so as, and, and you're gonna see here as well that there's, there's some big jumps either down or up because of the new buildings. So um, why don't we just start with the electricity at the senior center? Um, so some of these you're gonna see, these are just starting, they're new. Um, there are some voted in 21. I um, mean, we kind of, uh, because the senior center was partially in uh, 21 and 22, um, we really had to really look at that and do a kind of a guesstimate um, at 19,500. Uh, let's see. Oh, can I stop you on that one? Yep. Because this for the senior center and the library will be a question. Are they going ahead with the solar? And if they're going ahead with the solar, will we be able to, are we just putting this here because? This is here without the solar. Without the solar. Yes, so solar, um, we are be going out to bid. We have a few solar projects in town. Um, it's really hard to know what the savings are gonna be until you actually get into the process of getting the specs for the bid documents. And also looking at it, um, I do have someone who's gonna be helping me lo look at those, some of those bid documents who was very knowledgeable in solar to make sure that they are cost effective. Because right now we have <clears throat> estimates from vendors and we really want somebody who's kind of be a little bit more objective to let us know what would be the best, uh, what, what, what are we gonna be looking at? I don't know solar. So what are we gonna be looking at when we look at these bid documents when they come in? So. These new buildings, a lot of them are going to be, I like, I use the term guesstimates, doing the best that we can with what we've got from the OPM as guesstimates or from like propane, a propane vendor who's been servicing that building, what do they think it's going to be? So most of those line items with those buildings are going to be based on, like I said, guesstimates. But we've tried to be conservative, but we don't want to be too conservative and then get surprised. So if you, uh, You'll see that um, same thing with oil and water and sewer. That is um, what we we're looking at because it was, you know, 2020 is very low um, at 167, uh, but we want to keep that, you know, it's at 900. Um, telephone, we are hoping. Um, we are going to get our second phase of fiber optic. So right now with, it is at 4,500 uh, with the, uh, the telephone for and the internet for the senior center. But when that fiber optic gets completed, we're pretty confident that's gonna go down significantly, but be better to be safe. We moved uh, equipment purchases and postage to the COA budget, a little bit more accurate. Uh, property insurance. Susan, do you want to go over that? I do. We got the initial, um, and I feel bad, I didn't bring uh, <laughs> the quote home, but we got the initial uh, quote from Mick Gerald, and the total was uh, maybe $243,000. However, that included workers comp and police and fire accident, things that are not just in this line item. But I think we're going to be good with this. Um, we also get uh, two and a half percent credit for paying prior to August 1st, which we've always taken care of. Uh, and there's some other things that, that we're looking at uh, reward credits and um, maybe some loss prevention things that we can help kind of rein this all in uh, in the coming year. And so I just want to, Susan mentioned when she went over her, um, her departmental budget that she had taken on insurance and 
what what a great in-house auditor of insurance. She comes with years of experience working for municipal um, insurance. And um, when I tell you, like, there's a there's some employees <laughs> we take briefcases home. Dan and Sue take boxes home. And um, it, it's been great because she has really challenged the insurance company and we've gotten some better numbers. And as well as the deductibles, she's increased some of the deductibles that uh, it, the impact was a significant savings. So um, I just wanted to emphasize uh, that in-house value as many of the other employees that we have here. So, all yeah, right. We, we and I do, that. I do, I'm sorry. We caught on to that last year yes. when she signed it. To, I'm like, oh, she gave me a whole earful of what we could save. And I thought that was the greatest thing. So yeah, uh, yeah, we found out that she has a niche and she knows her stuff. And I will tell you that I worked for years with Carolyn's twin, Chris. <laughs> uh, so it, it's kind of a fun thing. <laughs> <laughs> I started my career with Chris. So I think I'm going to finish it with Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. So, okay. um, <laughs> all right. So we'll move to electricity at town hall. That uh, is the same as 21. I'm actually, Amy, if you don't mind, if there's not a significant change, do you, are you okay with me just going to the ones where I think you might have questions at, on? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if they're like Russell School, yeah, or things like that and in Town Hall, I, I, I'm more interested, for me, I, the new buildings were um, because there yeah. are changes and I kind of want to see. Yeah, we'll talk about those. For sure. Okay. So I'm just going to scoot down where the gray is. The alarm system, we moved that to the fire budget since he manages all of the, uh, the fire alarms. Uh, let's see. Equipment maintenance town hall. That's a decrease. I'm just saying. So I do want to go to tech services. So that is all the IT. And I, as I'm sure all of you are aware, wherever you work, the cost of that and the dependency on technicians, it's inevitable. Um, we have been significantly going over our allocation every month and Jennifer can talk a little bit about that. She is, she also serves as kind of, before we call IT, ask Jennifer, because sometimes she can take care of some of the little things that um, are above the average person's knowledge of IT she can go a little bit higher, and so we call on her first, but then she, when she knows it's above her grade, she goes, she'll call um, Northeast or we can call Northeast directly. So Jennifer, can you explain the, what we've been uh, paying now and what's happening every month and why we're looking to increase going to the next level of support, which is the number of hours of support? Okay, I'm happy to. Um, Northeast IT has been providing a really great service to the town. Um, and we have a contract with them for $32,000. It comes out to roughly 10 hours a month of service calls. Um, and that's split between the COA, the library, Goodwin, which is now just Hadley Media in the building there, um, DPW, and I think that's it. I think there's five of us all together. And of course, every department in town hall. So that is everybody calling with all of their troubles. Um, I am able to help in town hall sort of limit our calls because I'm in the building. So if something goes wrong, it's really easy for me to pop in to an office, you know, down the hall or downstairs. The COA um, and the DPW, I don't have that ability to, to pop over and see what's going on as easily. Um, so we do have a, a bigger call number there, I think. And, and I'm not saying that I'm an IT expert. I am just saying that I'm, I'm willing to, to take a little time and, and try to make sure I can figure it out and maybe save some money for the town. Um, and I don't know that that every, every other department has that ability. Um, so we've had 10 hours that we share with an additional two hours for monthly backup services. Um, and if we don't use the hours, they roll over, but we don't roll over hours because we use them without fail. And what happens is we start getting closer to the end of the month and I start asking people to not call Northeast IT. Well, can that wait till next month when we have, you know, we have more hours and I ask people to do this 
as often as I can. Um, but then, you know, if somebody's ser- if there's somebody's computer is not linking to the server, we have to get IT over here to get it fixed. And so we go out over again. Um, there have been a lot of additional things um, with remote working that have caused the hours to go up as well. Um, I think we've got most of the glitches fixed now, but their new service is $10,000 more a year. Um, and it's unlimited service calls, which means we don't have to care if it's 10 hours or if it's 20 hours. Um, and we just received another invoice for $2,000 over our regular invoice for the month. Um, it's actually $2,309 for last month. That's how much we went over. Um, you know, double our yearly invoice or monthly invoice for them. So that's concerning to me. I think this would be a good use of $10,000 for the town because, um, you know, very easily we could go over and over again. And that's $24,000 if we did $2,000 over every month. So I feel like this would be a cost savings to the town, even though we have to pay a little bit more. Um, does anybody have any questions or is there something I didn't explain? I have a question. Yeah. So the question is, I, I know that police and fire, do they ha- have a different contract? They have their own person who specializes in police um, requirements for their systems. As I understand it from them, their requirements are a little bit different than just a typical municipality. There's a lot more security and things on there. So they are actually separate from us. Yeah, that, that IT support for them is exactly what Jennifer said. It is specific for police and fire for their software and for their computers and their 911 operations. And how about the school? The school has an in-house person um, and I believe he might have support now too. I think it might be a person and a half. I'm not for certain. I do know the school, you know, did use Northeast IT to install some um, card readers uh, for their bus drivers. So even he can't do everything um, for them, but they just, they just have one person. I would think seventh or eighth graders could handle it too, you know. <laughs> Fifth graders. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm willing to do some sort of internship where we get the fifth graders in here and they can start, you know, programming. I'm, I, I am okay with that. <laughs> and, and Amy, I am, um, because I see this need growing pretty significantly, I, I have been looking at different options for us to look at. Um, whether it's a shared position or a part-time position to um, have an in-house IT person, uh, but right, well, we're not ready for that year. I, we're not ready for that yet. I think I need to be here for a few more months and ask some more questions and, and just look at what the this, this services and what the needs are. Because it is always better to have somebody in-house. Sometimes we have to wait. Sometimes we have to go through two or three techs and that costs money. If, if, if your problem isn't being addressed and you start at a, a level one tech and they and that you don't get the problem <coughs> solved, they move it up to a level two. And then sometimes that, so there is some frustration with it. Northeast has been good, but there has been some frustration. And I think you would talk to any municipality that's, you have to weigh those pros and cons. Right now, if what we're proposing is 42,000, but you're not paying benefits and all of that. But I I think there are maybe some other options to look at, but I wanted to let you guys know that that is something I'm looking at for the next year or for following years. I I will say though, if we don't have to worry about the hours, I would be able to tell people a little bit more clearly, you know, let's call Northeast IT and do that, which would allow me to go back and add those five hours back into my job description. You know, I I would be able to spend more time dedicated to the things that you know, are typically what I should be doing. Um, whereas now, you know, if there's an IT problem, we, y'all pay me a lot less than you pay Northeast IT an hour. Um, and so I've always tried to, to be mindful of that. So I, where, when I was talking about police and school, I, I was just thought, well, we're still all the town of Hadley. It'd be nice if we could have one, you know, unlimited contract you know, if we don't have an IT person, you know, instead of three different ones, um, but. I There's mean, so, the unique, the needs are so unique between those three, de, you know, three to four departments. They're so unique. It's hard to find one IT person who could do all of that. Okay. Um, 
I mean, I, I, I guess that's, that's true. I, I was just thinking, and when you get a call, so you call because, oh, I locked myself out of something and I need to be, something's a problem. You know, a quick call, is that automatically log in for an hour? Right no, now? they, they court, they um, invoice in quarter hours. In mm -hmm. quarter hours. It's the same and, as legal. That's the same as legals. Okay. And I will say that when I call them and say, you know, we had to escalate this four times. You need to reduce the hours or um, reduce the fee. They, they've been more than willing to, to review and cut, cut back the price. Oh, so it's a good company and they work pretty well with you, huh? They do. It's, it is a good relationship. Um, if we have problems um, with invoicing or something, I've always been able to call them and talk to them. Um, I, I will say that they've grown quite a bit. They're, they're servicing a lot of municipalities now. So they're, they're definitely becoming the experts in municipalities. Now, do you feel like we're going to have maybe, you know, I think last year was a particular big deal because we all went from working to remote. Of course, that makes sense that it was a big deal and a big year. So now if we start, now that that part is done and uh, we go back, were you having this problem prior to this year? So I want to know, like this past year, I get it, but how about prior? Were you always over? Always over we, with them. Um, we actually, the, when we first had the contract with them, we were only doing eight hours um, and we were going over and then we've bumped and bumped and, and now, you know, we're here and we were able to pay a bit of, um, not a bit, I think it may have been, actually, I'm not going to say the number, I don't want to misquote, um, but we paid quite a bit out of CARES Act last year. Um, the CARES Act was able to cover quite a bit of, actually, let me say that again, CARES Act covered all of the cost of the town of Hadley going fully remote. It covered the VPNs, it's covered um, the laptops that we got, it covered the Zoom that we're using right now. Um, all of the tech hours for setting it up, the remote costs, all of those things, that was all paid for through CARES Act for the town of Hadley. So the cost you're seeing is the cost to the town, to our additional things that go wrong. The server's not connecting. Um, we hired a new person, we need a new email. We had a town election and we have a new select board member who needs a new email address. Those are the things that you're seeing. Those are things that have to happen. Um, you know, printers aren't connecting these things. Those are those are the day-to-day -day things that aren't working, that need, that need support. Okay. Paul? Yeah, I, I just have a question. Uh, and again, it may not be the right place for it, but um, more and more towns and hospitals, nonprofits and so on are getting um, uh, hacked and held hostage. Um, their, their web systems, their computer systems and so on. And I, I'm assuming we have, you know, some level of security that's been, you know, as part of this, does that come out of this type of tech service or do we have a, are we vulnerable here? Or I mean, everybody's vulnerable. It doesn't matter, you know, what you have, but you know, go ahead. Sorry. Um, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to speak before you were done. Oh. Um, so we are, everybody, you're right. Everybody is vulnerable, but we do have a, a closed server within the building. Um, it does connect DPW and the COA into us, um, but it's not in the cloud right now. We do have it secured offsite. And um, so we're able to recover our documents. I'm going to ask Susan and Carolyn to double check me on this, but I'm almost positive that we have some form of insurance that covers ransom. Susan would. I want to say that David Nixon told me that we did, because that was something you know as towns were starting to be hijacked. Um, I think Baltimore was a couple years yeah. ago. Um, I th I think that that's part of our Maya coverage, or it was at one point. Um, I think Susan might have stepped away for a minute, and I'm throwing her on the spot, but I'm pretty sure we have that coverage. Also, they have a robust. Um, virus protection program that we're part of and it's part of our monthly fee um and if we go up to this they also have um a bunch of trainings and things that they do on a yearly basis for um employees you know how not to click on the spam email and things like that right i mean i I'm, i know some organizations <laughs> actually send them out to see if people click on them and then they 
you end up taking classes. But I, I again, this is a, a very serious problem. And, um, you know, I know we are working with an outside firm, but as opposed to having an in-house full-time, you know, security IT person. Um, and I don't know also whether the problems that we need help with are, you know, like network connected or are they hardware connected or are they software connected problems that, you know, you're, we're needing to use the services for. I, I guess I would just think that maybe this is a issue that ought to also just be discussed from a strategy point of view down the road and not to question how you're doing it now, but I just don't know whether our town has done this at that level. You know, having ransom insurance is great, but it's still an incredible problem. You know, you can pay the ransom and you might not see your stuff anymore. And, and do we have proper backups and, you know, things like we, that? We do, Paul. Yeah, they, okay. do, they do quarterly backups. They're, one is kept um, off site. Um, the other one is kept securely. And I do mean securely um, within the town. Um, and one's actually kept out of town. Um, these are these are these are things that are happening. Um, the servers back up here within the town hall um, every five minutes. Um, we and our problems. Some of our problems are network, mostly for the departments coming from out of town or out of town hall. Like DPW seems to have some more problems than syncing. The COA does, um, right. but you know they are connected, and we do have a town server in this building. Um, we are, our, um, our IT plan is robust and we're doing quite well for a town our size. Um, you know, David and I both, uh, worked on, um, community compact IT grants and we were successful in getting several of those. Okay. Um, so we were really able to do that. And, um, based off the last assessment that we did with Carolyn, the, her, she joined us for our first assessment and we were meeting all of our goals in our five-year IT plan that we mapped out with North, Northeast IT. Um, and so I mean, we're actually doing really well. Um, I, I just didn't know. I, I'm not questioning whether it was anything there. I was just curious. You know, it's something I deal with in my company and also with the, uh, some of my clients. Right. There's always room to grow, but for where we are right now with the money that we have to spend, we are knocking it out of the park. Good. Excellent. Okay. Not surprised to hear that either, but <laughs> just wanted to hear. It. <laughs> thanks. Okay. Well, thanks for being our IT person, Jennifer. <laughs> I'm here. Everybody, everybody, everybody wears another hat here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I can keep going. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'm just gonna. We went through that the telephone and the postage. Just a, a little bit of change. Uh, the computer supplies, the supplies, town hall, equipment purchase, those were all combined into one. This is where we thought they were all very similar. We can combine them into one line item. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna scoot down. Uh, just, you're probably wondering, but we still have to pay to keep those uh, buildings dormant. So we still have costs for Russell and North Hadley Village Hall. Hopefully North Had Hadley Village Hall will just be Another month or two, um, we have the RFPs, the new RFPs are coming back on the 28th and we have gotten some uh, returns already and the realtor has been showing it too. Uh, public safety building. Again, unless you have questions, if you don't mind, Amy, if you, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of changes. In fact, it looks like it went down for the public safety building. And we'll go to the, the substation so I can explain some of those changes as well. So that first line item, the electricity for the fire substation, um, in the beginning, up until, until I think December, uh, the electricity, those, those costs were covered by the building, the, you know, the building contract. Um, so we've just started getting billed since January. So those are estimates and the substation for the heat and the gas, the propane vendor gave us an estimate and they can do that. I just did it with my house that I just bought. Um, they can give us an estimate of what they think it's gonna be for a year. Uh, any other questions with those, with the two so public why, safety buildings? Did you say, and I just missed it, why did the electricity go down for public safety up on um, the main 
the, they're not not the substation, but it went down. The regular one? Yeah, the electricity went down by six thousand dollars. That was what sub was submitted to us, and I know that uh, Mike was trying to be as conservative as possible. So okay. that is where he dropped those numbers. Okay. So if we think, okay, so that's saying that the main um, building would be about 25,000 for electricity and the fire substation we're thinking is only gonna be about 5,000. And that's because it's not manned right now. Not manned, yep. makes sense. But the heat, we think might go, we might need 10, but then again, we'd have to heat it all the time. We, that's the whole thing is- Yeah, even, even at like 55, it's in, propane is expensive. Yeah, okay, so, that makes sense. Yep. All right. And then the Goodwin, the Goodwin, um, I, it was probably just an oversight, but there wasn't um, anything put in the budget for, 20, uh, for 21. So um, we are just uh, basing that on invoices of what we've had now. And that's what we've submitted the 5,500. Same with the heat, that's at about 2,800 because Hadley Media is still in there. We are, have not gone out to bid yet for those renovations. And I think we are still another probably four months away from um, having that, that whole procurement process completed and started. So I don't think we're gonna see anybody in that building till probably winter or spring of next year. Okay. And then the, the new library, those numbers were given to us um, by um, Patrick and they are talking, I know that the, the board and the trustees have been talking about some of those utility costs uh, and trying to do what they can um, addressing certain, I can't go into all the details on that. I don't remember what they were talking about and all the, you know, the technical discussions they were having about ways to look at how they're going to address um, the, the utility costs. I do think that that building was built to have solar. So I'm, I'm hopeful that there will be a savings once solar is put in there or on there. Can we, uh, um, the electricity on the library, that's the 35,000. Can we go up to see what it is for the Council on Aging? I'm just wanting to compare the two. Amy, while she's moving up, just keep in mind that the library's heat is electric as well. So oh, when you look at, it is. So when Council you look, on Aging electric or no? No, it has, they have propane. So oh. see it's 29. 29,500 there, 29,500. When you scroll back down and look at the library, keep in mind they don't have a propane line. I was thinking of that, Jennifer, when I was comparing it to the public safety. I said, well, why is they so much higher than public safety? And they're there, you know, they have dispatch there 24 seven, right? So I thought, well, that was odd. But then I realized that the heating is involved. To be honest, when I first saw it, I, I, I thought there was a major typo. <laughs> so I pointed out to everyone all the time. I'm like, that's their heat too. Okay. Great. I have, uh... so I'm guessing it's in another line and another area where we would be going over maintenance costs for keeping up the building. If they need to repair anything, is there another, do we have something, another budget for that? Amy, that's the 490 budget, which is part of DPW tomorrow night. All right, we'll deal with that tomorrow. Okay. Great. All right, I don't have any questions. Does anyone else have questions on here? No. Fine. You guys are good. Okay, so, and then the um, janitorial services, is that in DPW too? Mm hmm Tomorrow, yeah, so for all these buildings, the janitor services. Okay, great. So we're good with this. I like how it's all one and you have, it, it makes it much easier to read and compare the, the buildings and everything. I like that much better than trying to go back and forth to different, different, um, than, than to different budgets. Thanks for doing that. It was easier for us to review actually to have that. <laughs> it, it was, we, we, we did it by the uh, electricity, all the heat, all the oil, and then we did it 
colors so we could tell them apart. And then it just made it so confusing that we broke it into the different buildings. Like, okay, this makes sense. You could see an entire building in a block. And I think we finally came on the right formula, draft number three. Yeah. Because it is complicated, but I th hopefully this simplifies it. Yeah. It's good. All right. What do we have for next? I think it says, let's see. You want to do select board? Select board, yes, select board. Yeah, that's the last item, I guess, would be finance committee, select board, town administrator, and legal. So we, we actually combined town administrator and select board since I work for the select board. And the only thing that was in the town administrator really was the town administrator's line item. So um, I can go through that all. But I'll, I will hit on the town administrator's salary. Um, so the budget was 130,000 combined budgets were therefore um, decreases due to extra town administrator salary being paid for the first six months. So there's mm -hmm. where you're, you're gonna see those changes. Um, let's see. I, I, I am looking to see any major changes. So please stop me, you'll see under board docs websites for FY21, there's a big drop to FY22. That's, it was just, uh, uh, there was a wrong, that was the wrong number that was put there. I think, was that supplies, Jennifer, or? Yes, that was the additional um, 2,500 in supplies that was added at the fall town meeting. And it just, it got applied to the wrong account and Mary, um, the um, treasurer, um, not, I'm sorry, the accountant um, said that it would be okay to leave it there. And then office supplies, that looks like there's a big jump, but that is for all, uh, most of the town hall, um, like, like paper and things like that, which are bigger purchases. We just do that in one, bu one bulk purchase. And it, so that's where you're gonna see that big jump. And the HCOG, the Hampshire County, um, I don't, you know, I'm not sure. Oh. What that whole, Council of uh, Governments. Yeah, Council of Governments. They have dissolved. So there's, we no longer contribute to that. Are you uh, looking to, David, at one point, I, they dissolved, but then David was looking at maybe the FERCOG up in Franklin County, or they did give us some benefits to doing that. Um, be, when we were being part of that, um, they did offer benefits um, with with supplies or purchasing benefits. He said. So I didn't know if we have our have we seen a cost increase because we're no long because that's no longer the case. We're not getting those benefits anymore. So we did real well with if you're talking about health benefits. Um, is that what you're talking about, Amy? Well, he mentioned Hampshire County, Hampshire County retire, retirement. I don't know which ones you're talking. No, no, that's the um, the Council on Governments. They seem to. David said that there we were getting benefits from being part of that, but then they had the Fur Cog, I think, up that's the, the one in Franklin County. He said that one. He at one point was looking at that one because he said they were better. Um, and, but there was benefits to, and I thought he said that the benefits had to do with purchasing benefits, mainly in adding support to our departments. Sue? Yeah, um, we had um, gone through the FERCOG for um, oil and fuel costs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I don't know that we ever joined the FERCOG, <laughs> That's something, okay. No, and, and uh, uh, David kind of updated me that well, actually the, like the first couple months I was working. Um, so we do do oil. We just finished that bid uh, in fuel. And then um, I know we also, I think it might be street sweeping uh, that, that we also, I think. I we, don't know that we need to do that anymore because of the type of, um but what we're using on the roads anymore i know we use them in the past for street sweeping but i i'm not certain 
We have Chris can answer that to tomorrow. Yeah, uh, Chris will answer it. Yeah. But you're saying we're getting the benefit um, already by where that's where we're purchasing our oil and, and that kind of stuff through already. We just don't have to join. We don't have a membership fee. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. All right, so um, I don't really have any questions on select board here. Amy, can I just ta um, ask Jennifer to talk a little bit about CARES Act? Because I think that's important to see um, where all of the departments worked in collaboration to be able to see if any of those expenses for COVID could be reimbursed. And then there was a great deal of work behind the scenes doing the accounting with Mary, our accountant, and Jennifer as well. So I think people would like to hear what type of things were reimbursed. Um, so I asked Jennifer if she would kind of just give an overview of of uh, all of those expenses. Sounds good. Okay, um, I'll just be mindful of the, the time and try not to keep everybody here too late. Um, so the CARES Act, the town of Hadley received $471,000. Um, the select board um, voted to give the schools $225,000 of that, um, of which the schools have used their portion. Um, the schools purchased, um, air purifiers for the classrooms to get the kids back into the buildings. Um, and when I say they bought air purifiers, they bought $66,000 worth of air purifiers. Um, so they bought air purifiers, they cleaned the HVAC systems, they did some rerouting on them. All of those were through CARES Act um, and a lot of substitutes have been paid, through, paid for through CARES Act. Um, when we received the CARES Act money, we started asking departments to sort of look at what those expenses that they were gonna have that were not something that were part of their regular budget. You know, if not for COVID, I would, if not for COVID, I would not buy this kind of thing is how we told them to look at it. Um, so the things that the town have purchased, I mentioned earlier, we purchased VPNs. So those VPNs are ours. They're gonna carry on a benefit for the town, which means that if, there's a snowstorm and Carolyn gets stuck in Wilbraham, then um, she can remote in and have a full day. So, you know, to our curse and to our benefit, snow days are kind of going to be a thing of the past because you can so you can do so much work now through that. Um, we have laptops um, for almost every employee in town hall um, so they can work remotely. Um, and also, I will say, as, as with Dan, it makes it a lot easier to take your work home now for those things that you just didn't get finished in the day. Um, so we have the laptops now, which were things that probably we were not ever going to really have the money to purchase. Um, we did have a lot of extra cleaning expenses that came through for COVID, um, over $44,000 worth of cleaning. Um, there's been um, close to $17,000 worth of PPE. Um, and that's not, that is not including PPE for police and fire. That's us supporting town hall, COA, um, DPW, the schools, and I feel like I'm leaving out the library. So that's covering everybody else and park and rec. You know, we just bought them um, very large tubs so that they can get the basketballs cleaned for the kids at the next game. Um, we have plexiglass barriers. Um, we have a temp hire of a person who is working the door at town hall to make sure that we're doing COVID requirements um, with getting people into the building. Um, we've done furniture because we did do a move to increase the traffic flow in the building. Um, so that's where we are. Uh, Mary and I have sort of come up with, we're gonna do our final um, number crunch tomorrow afternoon to match up. We've, we're partially done. We finished the schools and we're going to finish the town side tonight. Um, and our, I'm sorry, we finished the schools and we're going to finish the town side tomorrow. Um, so I could give you a full accounting of where we are. We still have another eight, well, seven and a half months to use the rest of our money. And so I'm hoping to have the numbers for Carolyn to be able to know what else we can purchase and what else we need to purchase for the town um, to continue function functioning during COVID. Does anybody so, have any questions? So oh, you have, so you, so you still have money that has been unspent. And if you have, if it's not spent on COVID related, you give it back? Yes, but I'm positive that we will spend it on COVID. Um, we, okay. we have, 
we're being very mindful of, of the purchases that we're making um, and trying to make sure that we're purchasing things that are going to help the town in the long term as well. That, that, that these are going to be good safety measures for in the future, like a uh, new hand um, soap dispensers and paper towel dispensers. Um, those are being ordered um, because they're touchless and those are going to be a benefit that carries over to the town for a long time. And that's just, you know, that's just one example that I just pulled off the top of my head, but that's, that's how we're purchasing. We're not, um, we're being very mindful of how we're spending the money, but making sure that it's going to benefit the town and our operations. So you said it was four, 471,000 and 225,000 went to the schools. Now, when we talked to the schools, they were talking about they're using 113,000 towards testing the students. Is that an addition to the 225,000 or is the $113,000 in testing out of that 225? The, the schools actually received additional CARES money on their own and that 113 is coming out of their school portion of it, not the portion that the town gave them. Okay. So I don't know what their numbers are, but I do know they have additional CARES Act money that came just for them. Well, Jennifer, this has been all grants, right? Not loans. Is that correct? Yep. This is, gr this is grants um, that's given specifically to the town of Hadley based off the population. Okay. And I will say that the, for the stuff that the town, the town money from the schools has really been um, the air purifiers, which um, if you've been in town hall, you've seen them. I can, you know, there's, there's mine in my office right there. Um, that's what we bought for the schools and um, the town hall, the police department, um, public, not public, yeah, public safety, uh, library, the Goodwin, um, everybody has these in their, in their offices. Um, and they did, a, they did a lot of HVAC work over there. How many did you buy all together? I think we're up to 110 of them, um, rough, roughly about $145,000. But on the upside, um, I will say in this building in particular, it's an old building. It's a little musty sometimes. And I will say thank you because I'm finding it's helping my allergies a little bit too. Now, <laughs> how about uh, air purifiers often need to be, you have to change them. How often do you have, do you have to change the filters? The schools have already bought their filters, their replacement filters. Um, we have not bought replacement filters at Town Hall because we are just, um, we just don't have the same quantity of people. So we're not, the use isn't as heavy in Town Hall or any other building as opposed to a classroom where there's, you know, 10 or 15 kids in a classroom is a little bit different scale in use. But eventually we will have to buy new filters. But again, hopefully that'll go straight on to CARES Act. Yeah, I was just thinking if we can uh, have supply for when it does, because here's one of those things that we get down the road, but then it adds down future costs. A lot of these things will end up being future costs for us. It's great that we get them now and we get something, for, you know, uh, and they help us out. But down the road, it's going to be another line item that we have to consider. I will make sure um, after tomorrow, <laughs> I will make sure to price those filters out and go ahead and stock up for the town, other town buildings. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. That's great. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Carolyn, you want to keep going? What's next? Uh, well, so it looks like select board is good. Uh, you want to do legal? Sure. So we did that number. We did bring in police and DPW's line item to our to the to this this um, account. It just made sense. It just added an extra layer of billing and I get a breakdown every month of where uh, the legal services were provided and for what and from what department. So that gives me an idea um, of where most of the expenses are coming from. So 
kind of is what it is. We have a contract with them. It is over June 30th. Um, we could give them an extension, but we would, we are definitely going out to bid, uh, so that we will make sure that we're getting the best amount. It's, uh, it's been very expensive. We've had some expensive issues that have come up. Um, so I have kind of put all of the departments on, let me know when you're calling. Cause sometimes we can, we have resources or some of us know a lot of people. Um, we can run it by people who may have the experience, may not be legal experience, but might have some experience to help out. So um, we, we need to definitely, it, it's, it's, it's expensive. Legal is extremely expensive. So um, this is for the amount that we have right now. And um, it's always hard to estimate which, what, what future litigation is going to be, but it's based on past practice past performance and what we what we see might be present and what could be coming down the road. And, and I and I see that we were um, we were short looks like by uh, $10,000 in litigation expenses. So okay. But that was a one time thing probably and we'll probably be okay. Maybe now. I, I can't say that. <laughs> oh, okay. I can't say that. <laughs> All right. Well, we take them as we get them, right? As they come. Yeah. All right. All right. Sounds good. So uh, the last one is uh, the um, finance committee. You can put that one up. That doesn't really change much. That's easy enough. <laughs> so what does change though, maybe we can just jump along unless anybody in the committee has any questions. Uh, let's jump over to, um, yeah, the reserve. All right. Can so Amy, I, this was our idea to increase you. Yeah, can you tell me what we did? Can you tell me where we are right now in our reserve? what we have in there? I think you've only done the HR and there was something else for 6,000. I think you've, you've probably spent 20 to 30,000 tops. 20 to 30 maybe on seven. I don't remember how much the HR transfer was. Do yeah. You? Yeah, I, I can, I can, you know what, I'll, I'll get that to you for your, for your next meeting. I'll tell you how much it is. But this wouldn't be the busy time of year anyways. It's as you get towards the end of the year that the, um, that the, that your reserve gets tapped more. Yeah. I'm just curious on how, how we are doing with what we put in, you know, this year to see, you know, did we, did we use most of it? Are we expected to use it? You know, how, how did we do with budgeting this, um, this year? Well, it looks like last year, the last two years, you've been at 50. Yeah. And you've used most of that. Last year, you used almost all of it. We did bump it up to 75. We do a bump up. You're, you're sort of in, inversely proportional to how much you're cutting back other budgets. So as we cut, as you ask people to cut down their budgets and cut things a little bit closer, we're looking for a shared cushion for those cuts over in, in reserve. So that rather than everyone having a small cushion in their own budget, we put the cushion over in reserve. So if you need it, it's there to go get. So um, I actually had forgotten that we did we, we did bump it up 25,000. That makes sense that we would do it up to 75 um, when we were uh, we did those last that last round of the COVID cuts were, were pretty steep in the budget last year. So um, and Jennifer just gave us the transfer numbers. She oh, good. Just, in the chat, she just listed it was the, uh, from eight from the HR reserve or from HR. The fund transfer was five thousand five hundred and eighty dollars. Oh, that's less than I thought then. And I know that you have sort of a set aside for something that uh, DPW or Gary were coming for. That was about six or seven thousand in case you, they needed it. Yeah. So so that's more like more like uh, up to 15 that's been okay. claimed so far. Okay. That's certainly, you know, an, an area where, you know, you can, 
you know that's there when it yeah. comes to you know having a little extra money and uh, if we it only to- gets it only gets spent if you uh, authorize it yep yeah. and it all you know if we need to make adjustments that's sometimes where we look to <laughs> right and Jennifer's just stated DPW is about six. So she's on yeah. top of all that paperwork. Look at that. <laughs> she's got <you>. it. <laughs> all right. So I think that's good for tonight. Does anyone have any more questions? All right. So before we leave tonight, I know we're done with our agenda, but I'd like to just have Linda discuss the last few things to see where we are. You said you were going to mention the um, at oh. the yeah, is Carolyn is a, uh, I don't know, let me, I can't see, is Dan still on? Or did he? Uh, Dan's still on. Okay, all right. So, so um, feel free, Carolyn, uh, Dan. We each watched it on uh, the webinars in our own offices. It's interesting, we took some a, a few things differently out from it. But um, we already knew in advance that the amount that we would, get, we would be receiving, um, get that out of here, would be... 1.5 million. And um, I did learn that there's that it will come in two parts, 750, 50, 50 is what I was get, getting from what was being said today. Now they weren't talking to us individually and this was a national group trying to talk to uh, through MMA what this uh, what the impact is on Massachusetts. So, um, so it was very general and um, something would just begin to sound interesting and then it related only to certain cities. <laughs> Um, so not everything related to us. Um, we had some interesting uh, thoughts as they were talking about the various areas that were being uh, or that were being funded. Uh, there was some w- there's a possibility we're going to look into see whether we would qualify for some of the uh, uh, funding related to drinking water because we do have some emergency projects related to the wills uh, the tanks coming up. Um, the water tanks coming up, maybe that could apply there. Uh, we were interested in hearing uh, the, the funding in the area of fire. So we thought maybe we could get some help with the ambulance purchase coverage, some assistance in that area. Um, they did talk about the rental subsidies. We definitely want to find out more about that before town meeting. Once again, I wasn't quite sure from what they were saying if Hadley qualified. There are various things that they would talk about and then say that this is for, you know, this is for towns or populations of a certain size. So um, we, we had a good overview of all the options that are available. Revenue, uh, revenue replacement is another one. That is the one that is a main interest to us. At least it was to start with, although we were intrigued by some of these capital ideas as well. Um, so revenue replacement, Again, we don't, they don't say exactly how that works, but we know that we have some definite claims for a loss of revenue in, with our meals tax and our rooms tax. So, um, and then uh, if we have lost money for, due to fees, um, we could be uh, looking at, at uh, tapping into revenue replacement money for that. Um, uh, let's see, Dan, did I cover the things we talked about? Are you, is there something else? Yeah, uh, okay. no, that was pretty much it. It was very, very vague. Mm-hmm. The treasury, federal treasury hasn't issued any guidelines yet. Guidelines. going to go to the state and the state's going to further refine that. So hopefully, I think the one thing they said was that we'll get a, a dollar amount probably right around town meeting sometime in May. The, the payment is that what you're right we'll get a, yeah. we'll get some cash in but we don't know what we can use it for right so right and and unlike cares act where we spend the money first and do the then jennifer compiles all the receipts and makes the list and submits it and then it gets approved and we get a check back i i'm not hearing that did, did, did you either of you two hear that we had to qualify in advance for any particular i i got the impression we're going to get the payment and i guess we justify it after the facts, I, I guess. So I, I think that's what the, the most challenging part of that whole presentation was. It was extremely quick. They talked faster than my four-year-old. It was so fast. Um, and also, like Linda said, you didn't know, well, what about had a town like Hadley? And they went into you know rental relief, sheltering, and 
is that going to happen through the cities? Is that going to go right to certain organizations? And um, again, how we're how are we going to be held accountable to what we want to spend it on? But I think as they, I, I definitely got the impression that they still don't know yet. They don't know. They don't understand the logistics of how it's going to work either. Um, but. It was a lot of extremely it. encouraging as a recipient, but I'm wondering where the heck that money's coming from. <laughs> um, so I, I guess the, the general thing is we're, we've got some money to use for some purpose. So that I, and how, I'm not sure how much we can apply or would be able to apply directly to the, the operational budget. Certainly that was one of the intentions is to have it applied there. Um, I, I, we can't, we just can't say for sure um, at, at this point. I mean, it's very frustrating because I know we are going into budget season. I, I, I guess I'm just trying to take a bit of optimism out, out of this, that this is another pocket of money that is going to become available to us. So let's act like we know where we got money to spend and, and not act like we don't have that, you know, we have to cut everything back. I'm just trying to put that out there as, Help, help is out there and, and we'll have to figure out how it works. And so I, I just like to see us go forward positively. And Amy, I plan on um, finishing up the draft of the warrant. So we do, and I know you typically do capital in the fall. There are a couple, couple of things that will need to go on there. Um, and I think what's what we Linda and I were talking about today was some of those items, just the wording we're going to have to identify some funding sources, but with that, I'll be working on the wording that in case this month, this, I, I don't even know that we'll identify it as the ARP, uh, the ARPA money, but if there's additional funding, it can reimburse some of these expenses. So um, I'm hopeful. I, I think much of what they talked about might, may support some of these capital expenses that we're going to have, but it was, uh, we're hopeful. So do you have a date on when you would like, cause I know that we our capital um, hasn't met yet. So I, no, okay. So I'm guessing you'll probably need one more meeting after next week to vote on the warrant. So yeah, because usually we'll talk to the capital committee will meet once or twice. Usually they meet once. Will go is similar to this when on when I because I'm on Capitol with Christian and Paul um, McCretzky. and uh, so what we'll do is we'll meet, we'll listen. Uh, Linda will, will come up with some ideas, and then sometimes uh, they give us a whole laundry list of everything that they want. We chop off a lot, and then Linda kind of looks and says, "Well, we can fund it all from here," and then we go back, and then the last meeting we just vote. And that's There's that not happens. a lot. Knowing what this year was going to be like be before ARPA, that's the American Recovery Plan. Um, even before that, we, we most of the capital was going to be kept for this uh, special town meeting. So we have a couple emergency funding things that we need for some uh, infrastructure issues. And um, we have an opportunity to purchase a used ambulance that is worth about $260,000 for $20,000, so that will be on the warrant. Um, but they were even talking about reimbursement today for ambulances. Um, so that was, you know, we're saving so much money in general, um, but, you know, that's the decision of the town to move forward with having their own ambulance just to start that. Um, and, and the Route 9 project, how about that? The Route 9 project is the other one. So that, that would, that's really it that's on there for capital. There may be an, a levy assessment phase two that we'll, we'll put on there because that is really what tees us up for grants. But unless we get these assessments um, and options done by engineers, it's very difficult to get grants to fund these major projects. And the levy is definitely a lot uh, on that capital plan to address. The Route 9. So what, oh, oh, so you're talking about the Route 9 on all the water. Yeah, no, I just combined two things, sorry. So yeah. I'll go back to the Route 9 widening project. So there's a water and sewer line that's about a hundred years old. So to save the town about a million dollars, we need to spend $800,000 to replace those two lines. Uh, MassDOT will pay for the opening and the closing of those pipes, but we have to pay for the pipes and the labor to put that in. 
So that one's just a no brainer. It's a million dollar savings and you don't want to open up that road again. Mm -hmm. So that's on there. Um, but I, um, I, I'm confident that it might be able to get reimbursed. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's really, that's all that's on there. The, what I had brought on in addition to that was um, a, a money to pay for engineers to finish a phase two of the levy project in some areas uh, to help that comply with the FEMA flood zone changes. And just because there's areas that are failing, it needs to get, it needs to be addressed. But the capital part of that funding is usually available through grants, but you have to have the engineering done first. And that's what we need to invest in. Okay. Paul? Just something, a question, and we don't need to go into a long tonight, but um, there was at one point, uh, DPW was talking about the uh, insufficiency of uh, pressure on the, I think it's South Maple going down to that area and the fire department was concerned also for the water pressure there. And is that something we can see if there are any grants now that would have, that would cover if we quickly got our engineering in oh, to, to fix that? That has not come up in my dis weekly discussions with Chris. Um, okay. So I will ask him about that. You're saying South? I think it was South Maple mm -hmm. from, I think from where the malls or the railroad, uh, the, the bike path is. Uh, from there down is an extremely old um, under uh, needs serious help. And it's a very expensive line when you consider how many houses are serviced by it and so on. And so it's, you know, if that's something that we can uh, find a grant for right now under these recovery acts and stuff, if we can throw that in there, it, it certainly would be a huge benefit. Even though we may have to lay out some money now, it might be a huge savings down the road. I'll, just I'll, like I'll, I'll look at that. This is, unless they're calling it a, by a different name, we haven't oh, talked about that. Yeah, But that was something that was brought up to us when, when I first got on the committee that was sort of, Oh, don't, don't, don't look, things aren't as good as they look. Cause here's this huge project out there that we don't, haven't even addressed yet. And, and then the fire department, you know, also was very concerned about the pressure, um, you know, out that way. And, um, okay. So that's, and, and we ought to look at, it, do we have any other, you know, kind of hidden problems that we, you know, haven't even been brought up yet that so, again, I mean, this is the time. You don't want me to start now. I know, well, I mean, the time, there's a lot of money coming flowing and, and if we can grab it now to do those projects, it would, it would behoove us to at least look into it. But that's one project I do know about. Yeah, there, there are several projects um, and part of the challenges, some of those projects are not uh, ready Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that is one of my concerns and definitely one of my goals goals right. infrastructure in Hadley is really it's but, got some serious issues right but you know we have you know they're they're pushing an infrastructure bill yes they're, there again we should get ready because it's going to be who's ready fastest is going to get the money yep. you know in some to some degree except for you know those who have the you know. And that's where I need the support the town to pay for some of those prep, right. prep for it. Yeah, so we, we may want to look at, you know, something there in terms of some engineering expenses to get it get ahead of the curve there. Agreed. Okay. All right. Does anybody you know, have I, I do. I, I do. While we're talking about projects, um, I remember uh, discussing with um, I think it was Mr. Warner who was the last DPW head about the, um, the, the polluted water in that lake by the mill that was polluted by UMass. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I wonder if that would be something we could get cleaned up. You know, if we could use the funds for that. It seems like all that research has already been done. It's, you know, Hey, just just an idea. No, no thank you, Valerie. Because uh, honestly, they um, there's so many projects, and they just kind of pop up as as a crisis. Yeah. And that's we do a lot of crisis intervention and not a lot of maintenance. So. Mm. Right. We we seem to have a lot of studies though. We constantly right. are getting studies, and we're trying to you know they knew about some of these on these water lines. I'm not sure we used cameras. We looked at stuff. We've done a lot of studies. I'm not sure which study is which, but we constantly are doing I them. I hear you. 
Mm -hmm. and yeah, lots of studies and lots of policies that we don't yeah. follow. Um, no, that and that honestly is one of my goals of working with uh, Chris, meeting with Chris every week. And yesterday I did a tour of some serious projects that you'll be hearing about soon um, and trying to get a handle on that. I, I will say, like I, I think I've mentioned it before, is Hadley has a challenge. If you're just going to do grant funding for these projects, that is not the way to go because we are, it is hard for Hadley to get uh, to receive grants. Um, some of these are going to cut, the town's going to have to pay for some of this. Um, Cause right now, all I'm doing right, right now is going to Linda and saying, look, we got a critical problem here. How are we going to fund it? And, and it's because it's been neglected. So right. some of the things we cannot depend, depend on grants to do, we can do due diligence and, and look through those grants and PVPC is very helpful. Um, and they've helped us with two past ones, but we didn't meet the criteria. The, the criteria cont continues to change and its more focus is more on urban environmental justice and um, you know, just the past history of how, how have we maintained or not maintained our infrastructure. And they're, they're not interested in helping towns if the town's not making some effort to pay for some of the projects. So that's the challenge. Well, I, I think yeah, I, 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 I think that's a, uh, an important point because, you know, I think that they look at our tax rate and say, you know, they're, they're, they're paying so little that, um, for taxes that uh, why should we help them? You know, um, well, I I, think, that's my, my, my sense. I, I just like to suggest that maybe we look at you know, coming up with a, you know, a 15 or 20 year projection of major projects, if they're yeah, known. We have it. Yeah, have that. And maybe we should just understand, here's, here's the, the, these are the balloons that are going to go up. And I think we should bring this up. I think we need to report this to the town. I just oh, think it's going to be a town meeting. Town it's meeting gonna, is yep. that they need to hear that. Okay. I also think that, um, I mean, I don't know why the decision was made and I'm not going to second guess things, but I will say that it surprises me that we went with electric heat in a, in a building. And I, I don't know if that was because they assumed they were going to put in a solar system for it, okay. but, but I have to say that to not have that already set up puts us in a, a very precarious position. Um, and, you know, I just, uh, I just think that when we project forward on a, you know, the next time there's a, uh, capital, you know, vote in town for a new building, I'd like to see some projections of uh, cost of uh, running the annual costs that are associated with those buildings. And I don't, I'm not saying that that would have changed our vote on any of these things, but I think the electorate should understand that these new buildings have, uh, you know, an increased cost of operation. Obviously, we are running a senior center out of the basement of an existing building um, in a very small space. But when you put, give your own building, you're, you're going to be paying for the expenses of a building. And I just think people should be aware of what that is. Same thing with the library. You're going from a small building to a much larger building. The costs are going to go up, even with the thought that, oh, it's going to be very energy efficient. That's going to, you know, we have personnel costs with it and other expenses that I don't think people really thought about. Just so that we budget this, they understand what happens to our tax rate. Okay. I, just, just for transparency. Okay. Sounds uh, good. That, all right. That's all. And you need a motion? Are we done? Well, I, uh, I have one thought before you finish up. Yeah, go for it. Uh, if we're really going to try to get some uh, a, a good uh, effort towards getting some of that uh, national money that may be coming down the pike, um, we should think hard about what to find shovel ready. Maybe there's an economical way to be shovel ready you know, leaving out some of the major engineering pieces, but doing the other stuff that costs us less um, to get a bunch of projects so-called shovel ready and maybe get that benefit. Well, to, to add on to Alexi, to what you just said, and, and the I don't know how they exactly did it, but here's, I wanna use the police as an example. Um, here we funded already and we gave them the money and they did the ballistic vests but then they put the grant in, they just, they ended up looking like they might get the grant. They're going to give us the money back. The money would come back to us. So even if it's something we've already done, right. can't we still put in for it? It's, that, it's, it's completely shovel ready and we can get the money to come back to us. 
that's basically what we'll do at town meeting because we don't, it's not definite from the ARPA money, but we're gonna put in that language so that if, if we still have to borrow within the levy or, or borrow from one of the reserves, we'll be able to pay that back by putting that language in there. Um, we do have, so uh, the Route 9, those water and sewer, that is we've paid the engineers, that's shovel ready. Um, so, I, and I agree, I agree with you, Alexi. I think that is the, the key is to kind of see what we can do as close to shovel ready as possible. That may not, not, may not have an engineer, but we've just got to be ready almost to prioritize the projects, but th there are many. And mostly it's, it's mostly culverts, it's mostly bridges. Um, it's mostly, you know, the messy stuff. Um, but they, they are the ones that will have the tendency to fail without any warning. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Well, I, the, no. right before we leave, I just wanted to say, um, yeah, uh, thank you to Sue, Dan, Jennifer, uh, Linda, all of you. I see how, and Carolyn, I, I see how you've all worked as a team and you're all here on this committee meeting. You're all constantly stick through the whole thing with us and you're there to answer all the questions as a team. So I definitely uh, see that Carolyn has a lot of support there. So I think that's wonderful. And thank you for being there to support her in, in the new spot, because um, that, that's just a really great thing. And I'm glad and, and, and to see you all stick with us throughout this whole meeting is great. Thank you for that. I, I really appreciate that too. And you know, Carolyn, it can't have been easy to come in to, uh, to take over the town when uh, in the middle of the of, of pandemic. And so hats off to you too for, uh, you know, keeping your cheerful attitude in the midst of all of this craziness. So thank we're you. Glad to have you. But again, the town's been great. Overwhelming to, to try to fill in on David's shoes. He was, he's a finance director. Um, um, but it's, everybody's been great. And you have such talent here. I agree, and and that brings me to an, a question that I have of the board, of the finance committee. While before we go, and that is, you know, I remember when the fire chief and the police chief were presenting their budgets, they had offered to not take their already pre-negotiated pay raises. Um, but I just want to underscore that I think that I, I'm hoping that they will get their raises because it, it appears that every you know the rest of the town is getting their 1.5 raises. Am I right? It, that's it's up to uh, it's up to the voters mm -hmm. uh, and what gets okay. recommended yeah. whether yeah. they get the one point five. Um, I personally think the chiefs should get what was in their contracts. Absolutely, especially in a they year don't like this. To me. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I, so I, I agree. Um, and then before we leave, I just want to remind you guys, I'm going to have to jump off at 515 tomorrow morning, tomorrow evening, because I have a, you know, my class that I, I have to join. All right. So just a heads up. Okay, so I'll make a motion to adjourn. Seconded. All right, all in okay. favor. Aye. Aye. All right. All right. Good night, we'll you all. Get the red button. Safe drive home tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs>